I'm going to be stripping down this HS928. The previous owner wants the motor back, but I'll be pulling the auger off of it and then disassembling the entire snowblower, including going through the right transmission case. I was told it has a broken drive pin on the main axle. Uh, so at this point, in this first video, I'm going to be pulling the auger off. So the first thing I need to do is remove the headlight and the plastic shroud. There's two 10 millimeter, or uh, they're M8 bolts, but they've got a 10 millimeter head on them. So there was one here, and there was one just over in here that I removed. There's two more on the other side. One here, and one here. And then the headlight is a 12 millimeter head. It's a bolt that I removed from there. And the wiring harness for it is right here. It's a push clip. So I pulled that apart. And at this point, I'll be able to just lift and pull up the shroud. There we go. The next step is going to be undoing this push clip here. That's how easy they go sometimes. And then I'm going to lift these three, I think the relays, off of here. And that way my wiring harness is pretty much free. I'll have to do this one here. Oh, and it came off one-handed as well. So the next thing I'll be needing to do is to get the belt off. To undo the belt, there's these belt guides here and there's one on the other side over here so i'll have to loosen this nut here which looks like a 10 millimeter and this one here looks like a 10 millimeter then i can wiggle the bolt off and then there's a series of eight bolts holding the blower on the front of the snow blower so there's on both sides it's going to be the same here's a 10 millimeter head another 10 millimeter head two more below it so one and two and then on the very bottom underneath it's awkward to get to there's another 10 millimeter bet uh bolt and at that point the front auger should just slide off on some of the other honda snowblowers that don't have the electric shoot option there is a pin in the shaft here so you remove that pin undo this bolt, loosen the cable, and then slide the barrel out of the holder here. And then it has those same eight bolts and the same guides around the belt to remove it. So I removed that top bolt, which ended up being a 12 millimeter head on the right side. I loosened this one on the left side. And then there's actually one more bolt a 12 millimeter that just needs to be loosened so that this bracket can slide. And it's right down in here, uh, right at the end of my finger there, you'll see it. And you can reach it with a wrench. And then this bracket will pivot out of the way and you can get the belt off. And now I'm gonna continue with the belts on the auger housing. The one at the top, three down the side, and one in the bottom. So to buy myself a little more room to get at the top uh, bolt up here. I'm going to end up removing this plate here, this protective guard, but I decided I may as well remove the chute as well. It's pretty simple. So there's a, a tension spring here for the return on the chute deflector. There's the cable here, which just slides in like that. So you loosen this 10 millimeter nut, slide it down to the cable, slide it out, and then bend the barrel bolt and it slides out of the holder here. So there's the barrel bolt. And then down here, you'll need a 12 millimeter socket. There's one, two, and then on the power chute models, there's two 10 millimeter nuts there and there. And now the chute just lifts off. On the manual augers, instead of the two 10 millimeter bolts, there is a single bolt instead of the two 10 millimeter nuts. Okay, so I almost have the auger off now. 
I've undone all the bolts except for the top one here on each side. So I'm going to remove them. Uh, I've got the belt pulled off the pulley so it's not going to get hung up. I have the chute cable off so it's not going to cause me any trouble or any grief. I'm going to tuck it out of the way here so it doesn't poke me in the eye or anything. Come on. I will undo those last two bolts and slide the auger off. That's it, the auger is off. So, that's it there. This lines up just inside this box with all the threaded inserts. Lines up inside here. When you slide it back on, you have to pay attention that the pulley, the auger pulley, doesn't get hung up on the brake here. What will happen is you'll end up bending it and pushing it in. I've done that in the past, and then it's a pain. You'll get some sparks flying and everything else the first time you try to turn it on. Uh, there is no rubber pad on here. This is always just bare steel. Okay, 